Hi students, today we are going to learn how to solve a system of linear equations. Before we begin, we will define what such a system is. So, let's say we are given n variables x1, x2, xn, etc. and some coefficients a11, a12, b1, b2, bm, etc. Now, here we see that we have m equations in n unknown variables and such equations taken all together, they form a system of linear equations. We say that we have m equations in n unknown variables. Now, let's look at some examples. In the first one, we have a linear equation where we have two variables x and y. In the second example, we have one equation and three unknown variables x, y, z. In the third one, we have two equations in two unknowns. And in the fourth one, we again have two equations, but now we have three unknown variables x, y, z. And in the fifth example, we can see there are three equations and three unknown variables x, y, z. When we take more than three variables, we generally denote them by x1, x2, xn, etc. We call such a system as a linear system of equations because the power of all the variables is 1. In everyday life, we do come across many situations. If we write them as a mathematical model, we get a linear system. The simplest example is like this. Let's say a student goes to a shop, he has $10 with him and he wants to buy pens and pencils. Now, the shopkeeper tells him each pen costs $2 and each pencil costs $1. How many pen and pencils can he buy with this? So, if we have to find this, we will first assume that he buys X pen and Y pencils and then uh, he, we will write it as 2X plus Y is equal to 10 because then the cost of all the pens would be 2x and cost of pencils would be 1 into y and together that will give us the uh, total $10. Now, this gives rise to a linear equation. But this is a small example. In real life situations, for example, let's say, let's say oil exploration. There are hundreds of variables, uh, they occur. And when we form, we get a huge system. So, solving those systems is not easy by the usual methods which we know. To solve such big systems, we write the equations in the matrix form. So, if we collect all the coefficients of the equations and put them in a matrix A, we take the variables, put them in a column matrix, x and the right hand side of equations in a column vector b, then we can write the system as ax is equal to b. When we solve a system, we want to find the values of all the unknown variables which satisfy the equation simultaneously. Let's see an example here. So, we have a system of equations in two unknowns x and y and if we pick up the coefficients, we can see that here we have 2, 4, 3 and minus 1 as the coefficients. We put them in this matrix A. If we take the variables x, y, put them in the vector form x, y, we get a capital X. And the right hand side, 7, 10, we have written here. Now this gives us or AX is equal to B. If we open this matrix on the left hand side, if we multiply them and equate to the right hand side, we will get our equations back. When we solve such a system, we can we come across three types of cases. First is the system has a unique solution. We get the values of our variables and only one solution, such solution exists which is unique or we have infinite solutions or we have no solution. 
this is easily understood by these examples. Let's say we are given this system x minus 2y is equal to 5 and 2x minus y is equal to 1. When we solve this using our old method of solving simultaneous equations, we'll see that this gives us x is equal to minus 1 and y is equal to minus 3. Geometrically, it means that we have two lines because each equation represents a line. If we plot them, we see that both the lines are intersecting at a point. Now, this is the point which is common to both the lines or in other words, this is the point minus 1 minus 3 which satisfies both the equation. Hence, it is the solution. We say there is a unique solution because there is only one point of intersection. In this other example, we see that second equation is same as the first one because if we divide by 2 all over, it gives us the first equation. So, if we plot the lines, we will see that one line will lie over the other. They overlap. So then how do we solve and what exactly does it mean? We have just one equation. So we will assume a value for one variable y. Let's say y is equal to a parameter t. And if we substitute y is equal to t, we will get x is equal to 2 by 3 plus 4 by 3 ty. Because uh, 4 by 3 t. Because we have just one equation. So, the solution becomes 2 by 3 plus 4 by 3 t comma t. If we give different values to t, we will get different values of x, y. And this tells us there are infinite solutions because there are so many points on the line and all of them satisfy the equation. In the third case, we see that both the lines, if we plot, we see they are parallel which means that they both have the same slope and they will in such a case never meet, they will never intersect, so there is no solution. To solve a system, we use elementary row transformations. Elementary row transformations reduce our coefficients of the system to smaller values and many of them are made zero. So then it makes easy for us to solve the system what exactly are elementary row transformations? There are three operations which we do on our constants or the scalars. First is any row can be multiplied by a scalar. Row of a matrix A which we have made. And we can add a scalar multiple of one row to the other row. Or we can interchange the rows. To solve the system, we first method we use is Gauss elimination method. This is the best way for finding the solution of the equations. And for this, we have to reduce the system Ax is equal to B in the row echelon form. Now, what is row echelon form? If after doing the elementary row transformation, the final matrix fol follows or satisfies the given conditions, given conditions here. The first non-zero entry of each row which we call pivot should always have all the values below it zero and starting from the first row the pivot should be in the later column for each successive row and lastly the rows with all zeros should be at the end. Let's take an example. So we are given a system of equations in three unknowns x, y, z and we want to find the values. So first thing we do is we will take the coefficients 2, 4, 6 and 1, minus 1, 1, 3, 2, 5 and write them in the matrix. Then along with that we write the coefficients of the right hand side 2, 5, 3. This gives me an augmented matrix A, B. We will now solve this. So, we will do elementary row transformation. The first transformation we do is we, if we divide this row, first row by 2 all over, we will get 
the first element of the first row as 1, which has its own advantage. Because now, to bring it in the REF form, we have to make these values 0, because 1 is the pivot, and both the values below that have to be made 0. So it would be easier for us to do the transformations if the pivot is 1. But it is not necessary all the time to make the pivot 1. Then what we do, we will reduce the values below the pivot as 0, which we have achieved by these transformations. We are subtracting our 1 values from R2 and 3 times R1 values from R3 and form the row R2 and R3. So we got this. Next what we do, we will make the pivot 1 by dividing all over by minus 3. And we see that here we get the pivot as 1. Now, if this is the pivot, then we have to make this value 0. Because value below the pivot should be 0. We do that by taking the transformation. R3 is R3 by R3 minus R2. So now with that, this value also became 0. This matrix we see is in the REF form. Why? All three conditions are satisfied. We start with the first row. The first non-zero entry is 1. Then come to the second row. In the second row, the first non-zero entry is again 1. And the value below both these non-zero entries are 0. That is, value below this one are all zeros, the values, and the value below this pivot is 0. Now, if you underline the pivot, we see that they form steps. So, we get a step formation. Pivot in this row is this, pivot in the second row is this 1, and pivot in the third row is 1 by 3. Now we do back substitution. How do we do back substitution? For that, we will use this final matrix. First column is associated with the variable x, second with the variable y, and third column with the variable z. So we'll start with this. We'll multiply 1 by 3 by z is equal to 4 by 3. Next equation which we form is y plus 2 by 3z is equal to minus 4 by 3. And the third equation we form is x plus 2y plus 3z is equal to 1. So, last equation gives us z is equal to 4. We'll put it in the second equation which gives us y is minus 4. And the third one gives us x is equal to minus 3. So, we get the solution is minus 3 minus 4, 4. Let's say we have to solve this system. Again, we started by forming the augmented matrix. Pivot is fortunately 1. Now we have to make this value 0. And we want to make this value 0. So we will take the transformations. R2 is R2 plus 4R1. And R3 is R3 plus minus 3R1. This will make these two values 0. And this is what we get. Here you see that the second row has reduced to zeros. For the REF form, the row with all zeros should be at the end, so we will interchange R2 and R3. Now, this matrix is in the REF form. And when we back substitute, we'll get minus 1 into y is equal to minus 7, which means y7. And we get the second equation as x plus 2y is minus 3, substitute y is equal to 7. And we'll get the solution, minus 17, 7. Look at this example. Here, when we form the augmented matrix AB for such a system, now we have two equations in three unknowns x, y, z. So, we write the augmented matrix. We have collected all the coefficients and formed this. Pivot is again 1. So, we have to make this value 0. Now, we take the transformation R2 is R2 minus 2 R1 and that gives us this matrix. So, first row, this is the pivot. Come to the second row. In second row, 5 is the pivot. And third row, 
is not there. The third column does not have a pivot. So if I divide R2 by 5, it's not necessary. We can leave 5 as it is and solve the system. Here we did. So if we divide, we'll get the matrix as this. First column has the pivot 1. Here we have pivot 1. In the second column, we have pivot as this one. And third column, there's no pivot. So the uh, variable or the unknown variable Z associated with this becomes the independent variable. So we will take Z is equal to K, some parameter, and do back substitution. This will give us X is 3 minus 27 by 5K, Y is 1 plus 6 by 5K, and Z is equal to K. For different values of K, we get infinite solutions. So the first example we did was we had a unique solution. Here we have infinite solutions. Let's see a problem where we don't get any solution. So if we write our augmented matrix AB and reduce it to the REF form by taking the transformations R2 is R2 minus 3 R1, R3 is R3 minus 4 R1, we will get this as the matrix. One thing which we notice here, this is 0, this is 0, but right hand side is not 0. Now, this means the equation is not satisfied because if we form the equation 0 into x plus 0 into y, we should get a 0. But we are getting minus 3. So such a system does not have a solution. So, in general, whenever the last row in the REF form has all zeros or is of the form 0, 0, 0, 0, then the solution exists and there are infinite of them. But whenever the last row in the REF form is of the form 0, 0, and right hand side is a constant C, no solution exists. Thank you.